I'm Laurie Patricki with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Tony Parisi, co-creator of VRML and a 3D pioneer in virtual reality. So you've also done work with standards in the 3D space, right? Yeah, VRML was the first standard for 3D graphics on the internet uh, in a quite early time. This was before computers could really handle 3D rendering. Now, uh, the phones we all carry have 10 times to 100 times the power of the computers we were working with back then. Mm -hmm. The internet was pretty slow. We were using dial-up modems, but still we had this idea that we could do a 3D graphical experience in a web browser. It was a little early, but, um, and, we, and we actually built standards around it and everything. And uh, a lot of quite compelling demos, but the world wasn't quite ready for it just in terms of computer power, bandwidth, mm -hmm. uh, people's programming knowledge and capabilities. You know, when we were doing that, folks were still just learning Java and right. web pages. It was pretty early. Right, I remember those exciting days, and, and that was interesting. So, what's on the horizon now for these technologies? So, now those ideas that we were uh, working with a couple of decades back at this point are uh, actually ready and implemented in browsers. There's a new API standard for 3D called WebGL. Uh, I've written a couple of O'Reilly books on WebGL, actually. And um, that gives you the ability to do real-time rendering in your browser with mm -hmm. JavaScript. And it's the same APIs that run in mobile phones and tablets. It's the OpenGL 3D graphics standard. It uses the hardware built into every computer to accelerate the 3D experience. So you combine that with the power of an HTML5 browser, um, to do uh, animation timing, uh, compositing, so your 3D graphics mix together right. with your 2D graphics and you can build incredible experiences, uh, kind of taking it the next step beyond what people were doing with Flash for the previous decade. Right. So now HTML5 is this amazing multimedia platform that includes real-time 3D with WebGL. So do you have some interesting examples about what people are doing with it? There have been incredible sort of showcases of WebGL over the last few years. Uh, big projects from movie interactive movie trailers, basically, to show off a Disney movie, to full game levels coming from Unreal, Epic Games. They can, they can show you a full 60 frames a second uh, level of a game walking through that's just, just like the desktop experience where you had to download a gigabyte of content, but now mm -hmm. you can just hit it with your browser. Uh, people are building data visualizations. Uh, one of my favorites is a it's a, a globe that was actually built with open source code that you can get from Google. So it's a full map of, of our planet uh, with all the geopolitical boundaries and mm -hmm. everything, and then data overlaid on it. And one of the ones that I like the most is a, a really beautiful visualization of how small arms have been traveling around the globe over the last 20 oh, years. <laughs> kind of incredible when you see you can click on Russia or China or the US or other countries and you'll see the data move around and flow as you pick from the UI. And again, it's all just running in your web browser, no download, you just hit that and you're getting this incredible visualization. Uh, some of the products I actually, or projects I actually am involved in include um, uh, customers trying to visualize products. So a uh, model of a car, for example, we've all seen these in the past built in Flash typically, where you have a 3D view of your car, you click on various aspects of it, the doors, they might open. Um, you can pull up a little color picker and change the color and configure the car, and at some point the idea would be you would purchase that. So those kind of uh, uh, projects are getting built right now. Mm -hmm. So say I have a great inspiration or an idea as a developer, where do I go? What do I do? How do I get started? Well, uh, I, I can uh, sh shamelessly say that uh, you should start with getting my books, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we can talk about in a minute, uh, because there is actually a lot of uh, learning curve to get through. The, the WebGL APIs themselves are pretty uh, intense to deal with. You need some 3D graphics expertise. Uh, thankfully, there's open source technology built on top of it, programming libraries that make a lot of that easier. Uh, but because they're open source and in typical web fashion right now, the documentation's a little bit scant. You know, you need to sort of see a lot of examples and figure out what to do from there. And the development tools for basically getting your 3D art uh, exported into the product, uh, they're all still evolving. So, you know, it's a new and growing area. So mm -hmm. uh, information is, you know, it's hard to collect all in one place, and I'm, I'm doing that with the books I'm writing. Right, and you've read that 2014 is a tipping point for WebGL. What does that mean for JavaScript developers or web developers? Well, what it means is, uh, first of all, if we look at the broad spectrum of HTML5, right, we, we now have a situation where that is the universal platform for development. So whether you're building for desktop or mobile or both, uh, we're now at the point where you can build the application by writing the code once. And you may have to do different builds for the different systems, but you don't have to rewrite your code to native iOS or native Android 
or native code on a, you know, a PC or a Mac. You can actually write the entire front end of your application using HTML5. Same with WebGL. If you want to build a game, you can build it. It will run in a browser. It can run in an Android-based browser. Uh, slight aside, it doesn't run in an iOS browser today, not a mobile Safari. But that same app can be, uh, that same code can be turned into an app that will run mm -hmm. on your iOS or your Android tablet. So if you want to package it up as an app versus uh, you know, running it in the mobile browser, you can actually build your application once. So that's an incredible tipping point mm -hmm. because now WebGL is actually supported everywhere. And with the showcases and products I was talking about, we're actually seeing a lot of use cases emerge. So de uh, developers out there thinking about it are going to have a lot of, you know, guide points, waypoints to look at and say, oh, I can do that. And because it's all built into the browser, the economics work now. You know, say you work in a museum and you want to build a visualization of something in your museum, mm -hmm. like archaeological. You don't need a giant development team to build a 3D engine. You don't need to go license or buy a game engine from somebody right now. It's built into the browser, so you can have a small web development team do the work just like they'd be building any other HTML parts of the site, mm -hmm. of course, with the, you know, the added extra knowledge of needing to build and design the 3D. But the tools are all there. With, right. They're free. They're open. It's a, so it's a whole new world. Really. And are there any challenges if you're developing for a mobile platform? Now, mobile platforms have specific challenges. Some of them are design, some of them are technical. Um, so a phone, for example, has such a small screen that you're going to design your content a little bit differently mm -hmm. than you would if you have uh, the luxury of a large screen of a, a desktop or laptop. But then again, because, as I mentioned, uh, if you want to deploy your application, you basically you need some wrapper technology to help. Anyone who's built web apps that they then convert to mobile or are used to technologies, say, like PhoneGap, and um, you need similar technologies to get your WebGL app packaged up and ready for phone deployment. Mm -hmm. But they're out there. And, and WebGL works with most mobile platforms, or at least yes. a couple popular ones. That's right. OK, great. So um, give developers top reasons why they should use WebGL. Why should they should consider it and use it in their applications? Well, so it depends on the application. I mean, obviously, you're not going to use 3D for everything. Text is fine for some things, mm -hmm. for example. But if you have a highly graphical application you're thinking about, if you want to visualize data, if you want to represent physical products um, from the real world and represent them in a way that the uh, end user of your website can use them intuitively, then 3D is a better way of doing it, in my opinion, in many people's opinions, and simply static pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, 3D also gives you the capabilities to animate and do high production interface types of techniques that weren't really possible before. I mean, we started seeing them for a decade with Flash. Uh, that includes animation, a really nice rendering. But that was essentially still a 2D technology, so mm -hmm. you didn't, didn't have that sort of physical uh, feel that you do with 3D graphics. Um, and finally, yeah, animation and production value are, uh, you know, great, compelling reasons to, to uh, add 3D to your site. Uh, one of the more interesting ones that I'm involved in right now is um, we're starting to see uh, printing applications. So 3D printing, which is obviously incredibly mm -hmm. popular right now, um, allows consumers to essentially create objects they can imagine or customize objects they found. Um, wouldn't it be ironic if you could do all that 3D printing, but you didn't have a 3D interactive interface to actually create the 3D object? It would be ironic. So in fact, um, we're now seeing people create 3D interfaces that are WebGL-based interfaces to the objects that are being 3D printed. And that's very exciting. Right. And all that's being done with WebGL, and, and, and that's what you yes. recommend for 3D. Oh, absolutely. There's, uh, there is no other way to do good 3D in your browser without WebGL. Okay. Great. Well, thanks so much, Tony. My pleasure.